I'm here with Wyatt White, and today we are using some exquisite beads to do wire work and knotting. That's a great way to put these beads. <laughs> so blue topaz is what we're gonna to use today. Uh, this is a strand of beads that were made many years ago, uh, and I have the um, honor of being able to um, show you a couple of techniques that I like to use whenever I'm using beads that are of this sort of caliber. What I like to do is be able to put more wire working into it. So there's a couple of different things that I use for things of this nature. So I, determine, I determined that what I wanted to do was have two different types of wraps on this um, strand of uh, blue topaz. So one of the wraps is just a short type of a wrap like this that basically turns the wire into a little bead cap. Okay. So this is, uh, I just want to mention before you get going on the wire wrapping here. So this is, these are real blue topaz. Yes. And they've been faceted by the same people who cut gems for, that you would expect to see in um, set jewelry pieces. That is exactly correct. The, the, the color, the clarity, the quality of this particular blue topaz is pretty amazing. Uh, they don't make beads out of this type of material very much anymore because the material is so very expensive. They call it rough. So the rough that they can get that's this quality of stone is really no longer available, or if it is available, they would prefer to make it into the gemstones, the actual stone that's faceted with a, a pavilion and the, 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 the whole top. So it's pretty special to get to work with something like this as a bead. Very and especially special. Especially this large. These yes. are huge. They're huge. They're um, the entire strand, including all 21 pieces, is 889 carats. Wow. That makes each one of these beads about 40 carats a piece. So wow. just think of that 40 carats. In when if you think of that in diamonds, that's a lot of diamonds. <laughs> right. So where's your bodyguard? Yeah. <laughs> you're in. I'll be taking these home with me. <laughs> so you're adding wire wrap with sterling wire because Correct. that is equal to the quality of the type of stone that you would use. Right, and the, and the person that owns the beads thought that sterling would be a great idea. So I probably would have done it in gold, but uh -huh. thinking, thinking about um, the, the clasp that was chosen for it, which is a, which is a beautiful um, uh, toggle clasp, uh, it's just going to all, I think it's going to all work really well. Okay. So the second type of wrap I wanted to do is this. So it has an even bigger bead cap wrapped into it, plus a scroll on both the top and the bottom. So you'll have one bead that's uh, no scrolls, and then another bead that scrolls in a, a back and forth. And what I have done on this, because we, have, we don't have a lot of time to be able to show the whole process, we're gonna show you the last two. What I did for this strand though, is I made all of the scroll pieces first because they didn't need to be connected. And then I connect the scroll pieces with the little bit easier to make um, just the bead caps. Which is perfect, as long as you remember to pick up the previous bead when you're wrapping them together. Right, but that's the, that's the nice thing is you can get out of the mode of thinking, okay, with this one, I don't have to remember to connect it until I come back with the other one. Okay. And I find that a lot easier. Obviously that requires two different lengths of wire. So what I did is, in the beginning, I cut a piece of copper and I wrapped one of the beads. And I did that probably three or four times to get the exact length that I wanted to make the scrolls and the bead caps properly. So that ended up being like nine and a half inches. <laughs> and then the other one to make just the um, bead cap turned out to be six inches. And that I made uh, a little stick so I could, I could remember and I like to keep that little stick around. I also made for the other one, the one with the scrolls, this little piece of copper that tells me how long that piece needs to be when I cut it off. Oh, smart. Yeah, so you have a, little, a couple of little guides that allows you to get this as close as humanly possible to being about the same. There's gonna be some little things here and there, but that way you know it's, it's handmade. Um, so I've got the two pieces there. I can put these things away. Well, this is a much more precise type of wire wrapping than we usually see. Correct. And it requires a lot of planning. I mean, when it you're does. using a strand of very special beads, you need to plan ahead. Right. So I think sometimes we might be reluctant to practice in copper, but 
in this case, you probably saved yourself a lot of time well, and money. Well, I, I had to because I, I needed to find out what the size was going to be first because you want it all to, to kind of work together. Right. So how I do this and how I, how I started, uh, I just use the long strand of wire. And then I like to use, of course, um, a uh, product that I invented, which is the, <laughs> the multipliers. And you just slide this on and get that right in the center. And then make, sorry, make your little bend like so, and bend this up and around, just like so. So that, that's basically a centered loop on top of the wire. All right, once you get to there, then put your bead down. And then I'm gonna just move from the round nose to the bent chain nose. And we're gonna take a slight wrap Now, when I put this other one on, I have to make sure and remember to attach this here. Right. So, put the bead on. I think that can be the tricky part sometimes, is just remembering. Definitely, definitely. So we're gonna do the same thing we did before, about the same distance, wrap this up and around, and then flip those aside. And before I close this, I need to attach this to the strand. And that's just a simple drop it through there. And then you've got to hold on in between here without mashing anything too bad. And what gauge wire are you using for this? This is 20 gauge sterling silver, half hard. And I use half hard because you want the wire to, when it gets placed where it's gonna go, you want it to, to stay, stay there. there, exactly. All right, so we're there. So we've got the bead. Um, encapsulated, if you will. And then we just have to grasp a hold of here once again. And then I can just wrap and pull and just kind of come around each wrap until I've got approximately, based on the nine and a half inches, the length of the, um, the, length of the bead and a couple other factors. So we get a nice round circle on the top that looks good. And then we're going to do the same thing here, just by doing that. And the more you do one type, the quicker and the easier you'll get at it. So just like so. And then I want that one to go off in the opposite direction of this one, because I want the scrolls to sort of be kind of facing each other. All right, so now I bring in my little, my little guide, my favorite little guide here. We're gonna bring in a flush cutter. Flush cutter has a flush on one side and then it's pointed on the other side so you can get a really nice flat cut. This just gets placed down in the crevice right about there. And I've got that one a little bit too short. So I need to open that up just a little bit to get enough wire out here so I can cut it off at the right length because the other thing that we're gonna do here, of course, is make that little scroll. Oh, so that's just about the right size. This one we'll probably have to cut. It's pretty close. Yeah, it's, it's definitely close, there we go. All right, so the next thing that we do is a little bit difficult at first. You have to kind of get some practice on this. And I want this wire to go in that direction and this to come the other direction. So what I'm gonna do is just bend this so that it goes just like about that. Okay, so it's just like a little hook in the wire and then I'm gonna close that hook. So that's the beginning of your spiral? That's the beginning of the, of the, the spiral or the coil, yes. I'm going to do the same on the other wire so that I know that they're going to wrap up properly. All right, now I'm going to come back and cut half of that little end. If you don't cut half of the end, you're going to have an oval. So if you want an oval, you could leave it where it is, but I like to have a nice little round coil. 
just like so. It's all in the details. It is. It is just and and if, once you get this down, uh, as you've as you do all of these beads, uh, it's gonna it's gonna be a lot easier. So then you're gonna use the bent portion of the bent chain nose plier. Hold on to your beads. And you can see that this is, would be much easier if I was just making this coil on this. Um, you can make them and you don't have the rest of the beads holding down on it. So it's, it's much better to um, do all of these first. But since we had TV and we don't have an oven to bring <laughs> the half cooked one out, we, I just decided we would do the last two. So this just gets, you just squeeze and twist. Squeeze and twist, and your coil will start to form. That looks nice. Yeah, it get it will. Um, at first, when people start doing this, it's it's a little bit complicated because it doesn't feel like it's moving. You just have to kind of give it some space. And of course, with these, I don't want too much um, metal on pressure my. On the bead. <laughs> yeah, not no no pressure on the bead and none of the um, metal like tapping against uh, the facets. Well, and you've, you've been doing wire work for a long time, so you make it look really easy. True, you know, but I, it, am, I have to say, I am a little bit nervous with a strand of the, the quality of these because it doesn't take much to have a little nick on, on right. I mean, there's probably close to 100 facets on this bead. The work. So yeah, the work is, it's just, it's crazy. So we're just gonna do that just like so. Bring this down here. And then very carefully, I'm gonna pretty much use my thumb and bend that down onto the surface. You might have to do a little nudging here and there for it, um, but not much. All right, so now we're gonna go with the shorter one. Same process, only this one's a little quicker and easier. Okay. So you just push this onto here. Make absolutely certain before you close your loop you're, that you're going to attach this. Right. So when come I to touch the, your toggle before you wrap yes. it shut. So this is going to go here. Let this come down. Wrap this around. Attach your clasp. Is that abalone? This is abalone. It's so pretty. It's a beautiful stone uh, inlaid is just, and the workmanship on this clasp is really beautiful. And it's also sterling. So take a single wrap and come here and do this again. Connect. And then you'll coil it around to make another bead cup. Right. So and this one is just without decoration. Right, but we, what we have to do with this one is to, instead of leaving a very sharp, pointy piece of silver wire sticking out, we're gonna wanna use a reamer uh, with a cup burr on the end to make it a nice, smooth, round end. So this just goes around three times. Flip it over. Give the three wraps on the other side. And it really could be any number of wraps. Yes. It would be just determined by your practice. Exactly, and, and what you want it to look like. I wanted to cover some of the hole. Um, the holes are a nice, good, big size. They fit 20 gauge without any extra reaming at all. Um, so now I need to cut very close to the end, but I still need to leave enough wire here so I can get the reamer tip over it without getting into any of the facets. And you're not concerned about the reamer tip near the bead, it's okay? Yes, I am. <laughs> you're very careful. That's why, okay. that's why I'm, I'm leaving like about that I much. See. It's probably, what, two, three, maybe three and a half millimeters. Right. So now we have this little um, inside cup burr and that's just gonna go onto the end here. And you're gonna hold it. You're just gonna kind of re revolve this around the end. So the flush cut gives it a nice flat cut and this is gonna take the sharp edge 
off um, the... And basically that will just prevent the wire from snagging on your clothes, Correct. your skin. Gives it a nice finish. A this very, is a, very this nice is finish. A next level kind of professional. Yeah. You want finish. you don't want any sharp edges whatsoever on any part of this necklace. So you're just being really careful not to touch a bead there. Right. But yet you still want to get all the way around that wire to get all that sharp edge off. Yep, so, and then you would do the same thing on the other. So now the necklace is, um, with a little bit more adjusting, now the necklace is finished. Beautiful. You do some nice work. Thank you. You're welcome. It's all about the beads. <laughs> and the skills. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there's a little bit there's there. There's some skills, yeah. So I, I always straighten the wire with, with uh, uh, the wire straightener as well. So we're gonna, we're gonna do a little switcheroo here and we're gonna change over to some knotting. All right, so it looks like amethyst. Yes, we've got um, a magnificent strand of amethyst. It's a the, really unusual cut. What is this? It is, that's a... Um, uh, twisted... Yeah, it's a twisted helix is what they call it. And basically it's facets that go all the way around. I, um, we discussed what color it should be. I kind of wanted black. <laughs> Naturally. And, and the owner of the stone decided it would be light pink. So, light pink we have. Oh, for the cord, you mean? For the cord, yes. I see. So this is a silk cord, and because the, the holes in these were fairly large, um, I was able to get a size eight through it. Which is which, pretty rare for a stone like yeah, this. Yeah, it's a, it's a big, the nice thing is the, the, the people who cut the stones and drill the beads uh, have been listening to me complain about having the holes properly the same, uh, the same. All mm -hmm. the way through the same width. The same width. Thank you. Um, because a lot of times they will they will drill with drills similar to this. This is actually a reamer to make it larger. But this um, is usually the way the holes are. But so this the particular the holes end up like right. a cone shape rather than a this, cylindrical shape all the way through the bead. That's exactly right. That's what I wanted to say. All right, thank I'm you, glad Katie. I'm here for you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So this will help you. Um, to get those holes together if you need to. But what we have to do is we need the, the holes larger on the first three and the last three. Because we're gonna pass the cording twice. Exactly, there. that's exactly okay. right. So this just goes into the battery operated reamer. Um, and you don't, um, you're not concerned too much about reaming this type of bead? Oh yes, you're, you're always concerned. concerned. <laughs> but the nice thing about um, a battery reamer in lieu of a plug-in model is that this is less powerful. So what that means is that means you have to rely on the spinning of the diamond grit on here to do the cutting. You don't have to use any Push. power. Okay. And that's where people sometimes go wrong. So I've actually already reamed these, but I wanted everybody to see, as long as you'll ream this underwater, it doesn't mean you have to be underwater. Just the bead <laughs> and the tip needs to be underwater. Probably better if you're not underwater. And then you depress this, and that's gonna get that hole nice and larger, and you're gonna have to test each one of these beads uh, that you, that you re-drill to make absolutely certain that the silk goes in and then back out the other direction. And it's always good to do this before, which is what I did to make sure that goes right through and can come right back out. Okay. Okay. Uh, you always want the knotter tool in your hand. Don't put it down. Uh, what you want is speed with the knotter. But with, with beads like this, you also want not to knock things around too much. So this comes down, wrap this around, pull it through. Bring these up, let it go, and pull up. Through the yoke? Through the yoke and back. Whoa, so, let us see that one more time really slow. Okay. It's hard for me to do it I slow. Know you've, I know you've done this a million times. Let's see. So the knot nice and tight. Roll this over, pull okay. back, and push up. There we got it. All right, so, um, and just keep going. Try not to have clinking of fabulous. <laughs> well, it gets more difficult as the strand gets yes, longer. Yes, it does. And um, by keeping the strand down on the on the surface, you're not banging stuff around so much. And this is a traditional way of finishing gemstone beads. Yeah, gemstone beads, pearls, just whatever you want to do. 
And once you once you get proficient at this, it's pretty pretty quick and easy. I've been at a few trade shows where we've where we've challenged people um, to do a, a knot off, <laughs> and that's always fun. That's a good idea. Yeah, it has been. There's been a few other other venues that we've done that at, and it's a it's always fun. It's always fun to win. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We had uh, Tammy Hahnemann on earlier in the season, and mm -hmm. she knotted some cotton pearls, and I think you yeah. made one of the samples for her. Yeah, definitely. The, the cotton pearls were really fun. Lightweight. Very lightweight. I mashed one, and then we cut it open because it was mashed. To see what it was. To, to see. There's nothing but cotton inside. That's a good idea. This has nothing but amethyst inside, which well, is Well, I remember when delicious. you taught me how to use this knotting tool. Wow. That's and going back a few that years. That was a while ago. I had purchased one and left it in my desk for three years, I think. And then every time I saw you, I said, now show me how to use that again. <laughs> everybody, everybody does that. Here's I finally a, caught on. Here's a, here's a long ago thing. The first time I used a, a knotter like this was in 1982. Kind of fun. All right, so that's how long it should take you to, to finish up the strand. Then you're gonna go through um, these beads in reverse order, so we need to find out which, are the, which is the smallest, medium, and large. Because you're trying to stay with the graduation of Correct. the strand. So we're gonna go through the third, second, and now you're not knotting them. And then first. Correct. Now I am not knotting. So good with that. <laughs> Practice. All right. Now, now we're going to move things around again. It's all about chasing stuff around the uh, uh, pad. Right. And then we're going to go through the clasp and then back down through the first bead. This is where it's absolutely important for all three of these beads to be able to have this silk go right through it. And then we're going to tie a knot that I'm not sure that everybody knows about, but this is one of the hardest parts of finishing any type of a knotted necklace because you've only got really one chance at this before you're redoing the whole thing because you've made a little mistake. So what you need to do is you need to kind of push this out to the end and you've got to allow enough space in between here and here to be able to tie a hand knot. So you're kind of imagining how much room that's going right. to take up. And you just kind of take a look at it here and a little bit of with a little bit of practice and a couple of couple of times doing this. Yeah. Then what I do with the end is I wrap around my finger and then back under the strand. And okay. then you bring this into the center and pull it up. So you're making an overhand knot. I, I, yeah, you're making an overhand knot but with, it's a, around the strand. with a single with a single strand. And you pull that up nice and tight. And you're going to go through the next wonderfully delicious amethyst bead. It's almost not fair to call these beads. Agreed. They're kind of little works of art. If you think about the amount of time that it takes to actually um, facet one of these beads, it's, it's just, it's, it's... Faceted stones with holes doesn't have the same ring to it, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't have the same ring, but that, that literally is what it is. All right, and we're about to make our final knot, and then we've got to come through that third bead to meet up with the other knot, and then through here. So you're passing through, passing through the between the last three. Correct. And now you're passing through the third. Right. To the end. And here is where. I will use the glue. We'll just put the glue onto here, like so, and then pull that through and then let it dry. And uh, once it dries, you have to uh, here you can then cut it off. Great, thanks. Okay, well, Wyatt, this is amazing. Every time you're here, you bring beautiful projects. Thank oh, you so much. Thank you. It's always good to be here.